So again, I apologize, but it is what it is. <laughs> I have broke him. I have broken Barry Jackson on the record. He has been broke. Mike, and, and, and with all the injuries up front, how much does that shrink your playbook? Um, you know, I wouldn't say shrink because there's a lot of guys that, you know, there's uh, you're, you're attempting to do your best job at the art of um, – multiplicity of doing the same thing. So with a lot of guys having a lot of experience doing a lot of things, with the, with the offensive line having to block um, s certain things with certain rules, there can be a happy medium, um, hopefully to the point that it would be unnoticeable to um, all of you guys. So I don't expect it. There's always things that change, ways you attack defenses. You're, you're doing it to the strength of your team when there's, um, when there's uh, less experience and you're trying to have, um, you're trying to win a football game. You have to do, uh, you have to really strain and see how, how multiple you can be with being very similar for, for what their piece is. So, um, I think we've done a good job um, putting together a plan where uh, it's it's not um, unreasonable for for those guys to really execute it, as well as um, you know being multiple and keeping the defense honest. You know, but we're also playing a defense that prides itself on fundamentals and technique which is kind of very, it's similar to what we do in a defensive from a defensive standpoint where they're trying to get their players um, the Jets try to get their players to play as fast as possible with as much conviction so um, they they do a good job of being versatile within their system but it's also um, it's also manageable for them to get, because they're all about the performance of, of their guys and ma maximizing their players, you know, knowing Coach Saul and Ulbrich, um, you know, extensively. So, uh, they're, it's, a, it's a good opponent um, for them to identify, identify stuff. However, th that opponent brings it at an at a, um, aggressive level. So they, they really have to be, all of our guys have to be very confident um, and intentional. And it, it, bottom line is this, this defense is, wherever they're ranked is not fair. They should be higher. I think they're, th those guys over there, the energy that they have played with since we last played them, I, you know, just being involved in, in some tough times myself, like I know what type of coaching that that takes. Um, all three phases for the Jets, um, you know, I, I pretty much know all those guys, and I'm really, it's really, really cool to see. Um, you know, we're trying to uh, not give them, um, we don't want them high fiving this week, but just the, the the whole locker room. It says a lot about the players. They have um, played with energy. And I think they've had two out of the three best defensive performances. Um, when everyone was saying that, oh, the season's this, that, or the other, you know, that's my favorite stuff, you know. So um, hats off to them. We're going to have to be super prepared because uh, they are um, they're going to be coming to Miami with a point to prove. I can assure you that. What, what if anything, should we or could we read into the Hill not practicing uh, it's not really a read-in in terms of, like, where – like, I think he, in theory he, there, he would be able to practice if he didn't have the standard of practice that he, that he, that he has. Right now we're just focused on getting it as, as healthy as possible. And then bottom line is we'll have a conversation that will be based upon um, – 
you know, remember this is Tyreek Hill's career. Um, he's a very experienced player. I handle very experienced players um, different than I ha handle younger guys because they know what they signed up for, and it's his career. So when we talk, this is what will happen. He, in his season, his career, on his team as a captain, um, if, he's, if he's confident, and then I have the support of the medical guys, he's confident that he can go be himself and I have the support of um the trainers that we we that that's responsible um uh to the wrist and he'll play if it's not that then he won't um and literally every hour um for him is imperative he has had the same energy that he's had all season um which is I uh, you know I've never seen somebody take an a step like this who's already a great player and he is in this building um you know what is that a 12, 12 hour day of focusing on knowing everything to do and rehabbing so he's doing everything he can I don't know like I don't have a feeling um as of yet um because we're getting ahead of it um but he'll be spending time re rehabbing we'll see what happens Mike, I wanted to ask you about backup quarterbacks mm -hmm. um, and, you know, with some of the injuries we've seen to starters uh, in the past couple of seasons, backups have come in and played really well. Um, I'm wondering your thoughts on kind of the importance of the backup quarterback role in today's NFL um, and I guess how important it is to kind of invest in and develop that, that position. Yeah, it's um, – I, I, I think I didn't give it its due when I first got in the league. And then um, over time, it's one of the more important positions on your team. You do not – just because, like, they're, they're not the starter doesn't mean – I mean, they're as important as anybody because not only are you supporting the process of the starter, but you have to – at a moment's notice, go and orchestrate full speed um, everything that you've worked on. And you have to have the right guy because a lot of those times those reps aren't to be had. So you have to work extra. Um, and then you have to have the, the, the I don't know, um, the right type of mindset so that you, that zero to 60 process um, you are able to do best by your skill sets and not quiver. It is challenging, challenging, challenging. Um, because it's, you know, you never won't know what's going to happen. And the, you know, to, to sit there and say at any position, oh, we're good, we don't, ha we don't need depth. I mean... I think in, in just two years or two years of me being here, you can't assume any any position um, is going to be void of injuries. We've had we had one at least at every position. So the quarterback being able to do that, and then and on top of that, you have to garner the confidence of all your teammates, so that when you walk in that huddle they can be the, their best selves, and it's not like, oh, here we go. You know, I mean, it is an, an important role that I think the uh, Mike White and Skylar Thompson for us, um, every week there's residual effects of what they do during the work week through Tua. Like, th that is a group. Um, I think, you know, um, it, it, you know, Coach Bevel has said in his 20 um, years in the NFL being in those rooms, this, this might be the best one. And they're all supportive of each other. It's a hard position. But then there's a – you have some brothers that can attest and give you feedback and be like, dude, don't worry, that was a really hard throw. Oh, don't worry, I didn't see that. It, that's, that hits differently to your ear than, you know, this guy. So...
very important, and it will continue to be important. What did you notice about um, Zach Wilson's performance? I guess he was AFC Offensive Player of the Week. What did you What did you see on team? Well, I see. Uh, I uh, what I saw was, uh, yeah, I thought it was kind of cool because just think about that. To be Offensive Player of the Week for your whole conference in the same season of getting benched. You know, fortunately, he's in, you know, a, a small under the radio, radar media market. Like, whoa. Like, so I think it's cool. And what I saw was in, in te, um, internal fortitude, there was some conviction and confidence. Um, I saw when the, the pocket was clean, um, he was seeing it. And then when it wasn't, he was able to find ways to get on the edge of the defense and do uh, some of the stuff that, you know, is the reason he was the second pick in the draft because he has some arm talent that's unbelievable. And, you know, it's uh, – I think he – you know, I don't have to be in that building to project. Everybody knows um, – you know, that's a galvanizing situation because everyone knows how hard it has to be to, you know, be, I've talked about it before, you be, everybody wants to live up to where they're drafted and you go and you have to hear questions about stuff and then for his teammates to watch that happen and then um, him go out there and, and, Really, really believe in himself and show confidence, and then then make some plays. Um, you know, I'm happy for people specifically when when that happens. You know, I can relate to that stuff. So, I, I see a confident guy that's dangerous that you have to um, you have to disrupt. Okay, I think that you have to be very very good with um, your pre snap presentations. I think you have to get on edges of offensive linemen and dis- disrupt his vision. Um, and I think if you uh, allow him early confidence, he's going to play confident. Um, and that uh, so that's a, our objective um, to start the game. And um, you know I think guys are up for the challenge. They are, one thing they're not doing is. That you can tell it hit, it hit our locker room too. Like they're not taking this this team lightly. They're they know that they're how tough things can be when you've lost a couple games in a row, and then the amount of momentum you have from one game. So um, we're we're gonna have our hands full. Um, but at this stage in the season, that's what you want. You 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 don't want gifts. Um, victories. You want to go earn it, and they're going to make sure we have to do that. So we're going to have to be on all of our stuff, and which is why today is so important. It's the most important day of our lives. You mentioned how one game can kind of flip momentum. Have you been able to sense from the players, the coaches, the, the team in general from Monday night to today, how have they been able to move what forward was, past that? What was Monday night? Yeah, that's – so you know what it is, but the team – I see that a team that is eager to play football again. I sense the t- first time I talked to them this week, they wished the game was that day. I know their bodies didn't, but they're, they wanted they, you. You want to wash that, wash that out, and you know. So it's up to. And, and what I've seen thus far is guys focus that frustration into the game plan and preparation for this opponent. Um, I think, you know, on the surface, you're, you're generally kind of worried about that. Um, you know, for me, this team this week, I'm not. Um, because they, like, like I said, they're eager to go um, make some things right. And it would be, it would be one thing if, we spent that game, like there, watching the film, there was things that were to our standard. So we've been focusing on how did, how did the 
back into the game and fold. And once we did that, we mo moved past it, and it's been J-E-T-S all week. Last question? Do you think among those... Pass your Coke. Um, I would say for today. That would have been hilarious if you said Coke. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, along those same lines, um, Pepsi? Where, do you, where do you think that mentality... <laughs> no. Where do you think that mentality comes from? Is it the leadership? Is it you guys within the week, you know, after a tough blow on Monday? Um, where is that at the core, that base of, you know, the, the way you guys approach this week? I think it's Joe Shad. Okay, I was just seeing if you're listening. Your, your head was down. Uh, I just wasn't sure. Um, I think that it all has to do with the collection of individuals. I think um, as, uh, you know, a coaching staff, we try to do our best to um, kind of, you know, you, you end a game and there's so many things that happen. Individuals think about this play, this play, this play. And then quite naturally, you're like, how did this happen? I think as a coaching staff, we, we kind of um, look at things and then you deliver a mindset message on like, okay, well, this is how we can kind of categorize that. And then it takes a, a bunch of like-minded individuals who are um, interested in things much beyond themselves, who are strong-minded uh, with will to, to listen to that and then decide, hey, you know what? Collectively, this is the way we're going. This is how um, we, we agree that um, we can file this under the, uh, in this envelope and say, okay, that's what that was, and learn from it. Um, and that, that's why I love the locker room, because they, they are not blinking, feeling sorry for themselves. They are 100% focused on the Jets, which you have to be in this league. That's a, another reason, another example that will always present itself in every NFL season of why you have to come prepared. Everyone gets paid, and there's a lot of teams – um, that win games that beat Vegas' odds. So um, all of that being said, I think the bottom line is none of it matters unless you have the right human beings as players. You know, my expectation is that as coaches, we, we funnel the information appropriately um, because that's our jobs. But I can have the – I could be Newt, Newt Rockney. And if I have guys that aren't about, um, about each other and um, focused on the right things and committed to this team and organization in the city, then it doesn't matter. So um, I would say it's a credit to the, to the locker room that has been built up and the, the individuals in it. Cool? All right.